You ready? Yeah. Okay, it's Wednesday afternoon and uh, the conference is winding down. As you can hear, probably hear in the background that there are still a lot of people here though, but uh, um, it's so it's been three days of Wireshark users and developers and, and trainers and and uh, you know this is the first time that most of these people have gotten together. For, for me personally, it's the first time that I've met uh, uh, all these core developers that I've been working with, uh, some of them for, for over nine years. It, it, it was really cool. Um, now, you, you mentioned that um, there are a lot of people here that you had knew, you have known over the years but have never met. Yes. But when you finally meet them, um, are they what you expect them to be as a, as, a, as a person, not so much as a developer? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, when you, even when you work with somebody remotely, you, know, you, you kind of get a feel for the person you know, by, you know, by the tone of the writing and things like that. So, you know, there, nothing was a major surprise. I mean, most of the, uh, in fact, the entire, well, let me back up. The Wireshark development team is very fortunate in that everybody, I don't want to, you know, Put it in a bad way, but everybody's a grown-up. I mean, everybody's mature, and they work together. And they're, you know, when, when there's a problem, there's not a lot of infighting. There's, you know, people looking towards the solution. Uh, um, if they didn't like what they were doing, they wouldn't be here. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, you know, just the. I can't stress enough that you know the Wireshark the development team is just such a great bunch of guys, and I, I feel very fortunate to be working with them. Do you think that there is a such thing as open source personality? There's just personality. I mean, there's a uh, you know, there's some people who tend are they to more well. generous? You think? Yeah. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people contribute to Wireshark to solve problems for themselves. I mean, it, you know, there's a lot of helping yourself going in there, but, but a lot of it has to to do with very you know with generosity and friendliness, and uh, I believe. And uh, you know, it, one of the reasons the project was started was because. I had made use of open source product, products over the years, and when I decided to write my own protocol to Sector, I made it open source just to kind of give back to that community. And, and so there is kind of a, a giving attitude, but you know, at the same time, these you know these people have jobs and they you know, they earn a living, and you know part of that living for most of them is, is through Wireshark. During the round table discussion, you had mentioned that. You're the only person within the development community that is not working for a uh, Fortune 500, Fortune 1000 company. Um, can you elaborate on that? Well, I, well, I can't with authority say that I'm the only one, but uh, it, it's true. Most of, this, the, most of the developers, you know, the core development team working on Wireshark work for large companies. So everyone have a day job? Yes. And then they're doing this because their, yeah, their day job involves protocols, and for pretty you know, for most of them, the, it, there is a lot of business sense in, in working on Wireshark. You know, if you can spend part of your time working on this tool that's going to save you a bunch of time later on, then you know that's a no-brainer to do that. And, and a lot of them have you know have done that, and they just enjoy working on Wireshark and. and Unfortunately, their companies see the, the advantage in doing that. Now, I know you've been at it for 10 years now. Do you think that that you're ready to give that leadership to someone, or you, do, you, do you think that this is just the beginning? There's just so much more that you can do that you're still excited? Um, I think it's just the beginning. I mean, the... the uh, uh, in my keynote speech, I mentioned that uh, you know, leading up to 2005, when we did the in 2006, when we ended up changing the name, the, the project kind of had leveled off. It was uh, I won't say stagnating, but it was certainly you know, kind of leveling off. And uh, coming over to Case and, and you know, going over to Wireshark, it has really reinvigorated the project. So you think that changing from Ethereum to Wireshark was sort of a recommitment in a way? Yes, it was. It was definitely a recommitment, you know, both for me and, and I think for some other people. And uh, uh, it's definitely paid off. We uh, get about three times as many downloads per month of the Windows installer right now than we did uh, leading up to. Can you give us a number? Uh, it's about it's over three hundred thousand downloads a month. Um, you mentioned actually also at the keynote that 
um, you're finally releasing 1.0. Why does it take so long to get to an integer? <laughs> no, no, okay. That's a question everybody's been asking me. Uh, it, for, for me personally, it was just uh, getting uh, you know these last few features and bits of functionality in. Um, the, the last major thing for me before I felt comfortable attaching a 1.0 version number was getting privilege separation set up uh, for the different operating systems as much as we could. Um, you know, we kind of can't do that under Linux, but, but under the, the Linux and Unix operating systems, getting it set up so that you could, you know, capture it as one you know, user ID and display as another user ID so that you could use that safely uh, was a really big thing, and that was a big sticking point, you know, before moving that to 1.0 for me. You know, being an outsider, um, again, going back to the open source personality, um, I, I think that it's, open source is almost, in a way, a form of national service. There's a little bit of that. Everybody wants to do it for the good of something. Yes. Um, but what happened is that when something gets successful, money gets into the mix. Is money evil for open source? No. Um, any major successful any any you know open source project of any you know man you know any good size needs infrastructure you need resources you need you know developers you need systems you need uh, equipment and bandwidth and all this other stuff and you know people to take care of overhead and you know that takes a lot of time and a lot of money and, and you know it, it you, know, you, you just have to have that there. And so, so it's not about money as much as about recontributing back yeah. to the community. So it's okay to make money, but it's not okay to just take the money and run. <laughs> I, I guess that's one way to put it. The, uh, I mean, one thing that's uh, kind of uh, impressed me about the rest of the development team is that you know, any move I've made towards you know, commerciality has, has been accepted because they know that any money that we bring in in the back end helps the project. You know, you know, anything that we bring in means that you know we get better service service for the project. We get you know people that we can pay to, to help with the maintenance and, and, and do all sorts of other things. I mean, like this conference, Shark Fest didn't happen magically. You know, people had to pay for all this stuff. And we, you know, we had to uh, kick in a lot of money ourselves, case wise, and, and you know, help, you know, little help from sponsors and things like that. But uh, you know, it, this stuff takes time and money. And, you know, people tend to realize that. Um, yeah, you, uh, I, I think open source developers are often, you know, characterized as, as these idealists who think everything should be free, but I, I don't think that's the case. So tell me, tell me more about Gerald Combs. Who is Gerald Combs? What, what does Gerald Combs want? Is this, how, how does this achieve the thing that is really important deep down to Gerald Combs? Well, I mean, this is uh, Shark Fest in, in particular is just is, is the culmination of, of a lot of you know a lot of work over many years. And uh, um, I mentioned in my keynote that you know, early on the project almost stopped because I'd gotten distracted with, with some other things. You know, my wife and I bought a house and other things like that. But uh, um, you know, I got a call from one of the developers, and you know, he, you know. He asked me if the project was going to continue, and I realized that uh, you know, I had built up this thing that you know, I owed, owed it to, to other people to keep going. And uh, you know, I just decided to give enough of myself to, to keeping this going, and uh, um, you know, th that's kind of where I ended up today. <laughs> you know, it, it's something that I enjoy doing, it's something that I don't plan on stopping doing anytime soon. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to continue Well, um, speaking for myself, Gerald, and perhaps for the rest of the community, I want to thank you. And not only for the effort that you put into Wireshark and Ethereal before that, but also being such a great model for all of us. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much.